This house was built in 1880. So since it was built in the 1880s, that means there's gonna be a privy. So I have a probe here. And when I probe down, I don't get very far. It's very hard. Now, if you look over here at the corner of the lot, you'll see that it probes differently. Look at this. that all the way down pretty easy yeah and listen to this you hear that so there it is the old 1800s house and it was built in 1880s and so there could be uh, some old bottles there beautiful That's about 10 minutes of digging and I was starting to get worried. After 10 minutes of digging, I was starting to get worried because I didn't find any evidence. Sometimes people just dig a pit in their backyard and throw junk in it like, you know, modern day, modern day people. But here's an old saucer with this old, old design on it. So the deal is crunchiness. If you're digging and, and you're crunching stuff, then that's good. Keep digging. Here's another good sign right here. Here we have a ham bone. Look at that. Hmm. How long do ham bones last in the ground? I don't know, but I find them all the time. And then we have this. This is a very good sign because this tells us that we are in the days of coal. So like, I don't know what this is other than it comes out of a coal furnace. And people that do traditional blacksmithing uh, report that after years of burning coal, they get these like these rocks, mineral deposits that build up in the in the ashes. Okay, so there's an actual find down there, and it's white. Maybe it's like a piece of a statue. You see it right there. Now here's the part where it could be like absolutely heartbreaking, waste of time, or this could be good. The problem with privy digging is that sometimes it's just a hole. Full, oh of modern day junk um, and the whole thing is a complete waste of time you know but um that's the bottom of a crock I also see a bottle uh, it's a ketchup bottle of course now a ketchup bottle is no reason to get discouraged because ketchup bottles have changed relatively little over 120 years ketchup bottles have changed very little over the years this design this nine-sided design has made the bottle just indestructible. Do you know when you like pull the handle on the slot machine, the old slot machines, or push the button, and like the numbers spin, and then like you almost get the right numbers, and so it, it convinces you to like to keep playing, even though that's not necessarily true. Almost getting the right numbers doesn't really mean anything, but hey, this is what's happening here. I'm almost getting the right stuff. Look at this, look. There's a nice cobalt bottle down here, and I'm still not convinced this is not 1940s which would be not really that great, but, but it, could, it could be old, look. I don't know, what do you think, 1920s? That'd be cool if it was 1920s. Ingram's shaving cream on it. Ingram's shaving cream. Um, I think I see a cork top flask in there. Let's look. Yep, it's a slick machine made whiskey, so not that great, not that old, but I think I can still put a paper label on it and like restore it to what it looked like originally. So, all right, let's keep digging. 
There's the amount of dirt I've dug. Here's the hole and here's a crazy find. Look at this down there. You see that white thing? Why would that be there? Why would that be there? It was on a uh, number four when I dug it up. So it rolled <laughs> into the outhouse hole. Somebody threw the dice down the outhouse hole and it landed on four. I found another one of these whiskeys and this one has a maker's mark on it that indicates uh, 1920s here. So we've got some, uh, got some drinking, we've got some gambling, here is a tobacco tin, smoking, uh, people were shaving, women started shaving in the <laughs> 1920s I believe and uh, women started smoking and, and drinking too, that used to be just a man's thing. So I think we're looking at uh, 1920s. Alright, the date on this privy just jumped backwards about 20 years. So here we have this is a blown bottle that's blown in a mold. I think that's an applied top, I don't know. But that looks to be about 1890s, I think. Two more things down here. Here we have a marble and some type of battery pack. See, a marble and a battery pack. The expenses of the government reach everybody. Taxes take from everyone a part of his earnings and force everyone to work for a certain part of his time for the government. should add 100 million dollars of expense, it would represent four days more work of these wage earners. I can't believe that we've just been dreaming about all of our feelings, but then with a door, then tell me again. Okay, so I think I know what's going on here. So, during the 1800s, this was a privy and there wasn't that much stuff to throw down the privy back then. And then during like the 1920s, uh, people just casually threw stuff down here. And then when they got plumbing in the 1940s, yeah, when they got plumbing in the 1940s, they just started just filling the whole thing up with junk just to get rid of it. All right, so we've got to dig that way. Well, that was a lot of work for nothing, but uh, I don't mind work at all. I like digging. I like looking for old artifacts and old bottles, so I don't mind at all. It's just, you don't really get a chance to do this very often because, you know, it's, it, how do you ask somebody, you know, can I, can I dig a giant pit in your yard looking for old junk, you know? Like, Usually people don't let you do that, but so I'm going to metal detect this yard and uh, put this put this down and wet it down, and then uh, we'll see if we can find anything metal detecting. All right. Exhausting work. Metal detecting doesn't make sense sometimes, um, most of the time actually. Um, here we have the out old outhouse, you know, and this house has been here for 120 something years, you know. 
So you would think that like there'd be like a bunch of stuff right here where the outhouse is because people would come out here two, three, whatever times a day. And so, and then when you metal detect, there's not that much stuff there, but I got this. First I thought it was one of those brass shotgun shells like I always find, but now I see it has some fancy writing on it. Look at that. Looks like a lipstick container. Um, yeah, it looks like a lipstick canister here. It's got that fancy writing on it, so. So if you're lucky, you can find rare antique bottles in the bottom of, of privies, but you gotta be lucky and you have to work hard and you're almost never lucky. But uh, in any case, it's interesting. We can kind of catch a glimpse of what the inside of the house uh, looked like by looking at the three of these things that I found. Um, and here we have what's left of a bud vase. Um, it's a rose colored, I think it's called throne bud vase. And so that must have been the wife's favorite color. She also had this rose colored uh, glassware. She probably had a whole kitchen full of that. And then uh, lastly, we see that she probably had a vase full of uh, like the same color marble. So it's, it's interesting uh, what you can find. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me. There's more videos to come. I don't know exactly what. I've got some things uh, in the works, but it's a matter of just getting it done. So I'll see you next time. Thank you.